Over two months ago, I posted a video titled How many characters can you unlock in your very first repentance run, where I basically said that 9 characters is definitely possible, but 12 is the absolute limit. Since then, I've made about 3 more videos on the same topic, where we broke the boundaries and discovered it was possible to unlock 30. Many of the comments on that video were directed at how hypothetical the run seemed, improbable even. Well today, I'm here to tell you, the run is no longer a hypothetical, because I just finished it. Let me start off by laying down this video's groundwork. First, I'm going to give you a full summary of the run, who we got first, our methods, etc. Then, while I'm going in depth on the methodology, I'll go more in depth on how the mechanics function and why they worked. For the next section, I'm going to touch more on the crazy bugs we found, such as an infinite donation machine or how Tainted Kane can pick up and touch items. And finally, I'll give you my full and complete guide on how to optimize this run for your own use. Let's get started. Before this, however, two things. Thing number one. Before watching this video, watch the previous ones on this topic. I don't want to have to re-explain everything we did in this run and why it works. I know I'm going to be accused of cheating this in, but something this challenging, people get mad they didn't do it first. To that, I say this. Close to all of this run was streamed live to my Twitch, barring some grinding, but some of you were even there for that. I'll be uploading every single video I have of this run up to my YouTube channel as one mega compilation. The only suspicious thing about this run is that I don't have footage of the beginning. This is because Twitch removes my VODs after 14 days because I am not a partner on their platform. And 3 weeks ago, I had to factory reset my computer due to some memory issues, so I no longer have the recording footage either. But what I do have saved are all of the seeds. As I mentioned in the previous videos, when we run this on stream, I have the viewers load up the seeds on their own file, and check every single secret room for us in debug, to speed up the process of finding our key. One of my testers, XYRT, had saved every single seed, from the OG seed to every single victory lap. You can find these seeds in our Discord as well. Now that that's out of the way, the second thing. I can only do this stuff with your guys' support. If you enjoy my content, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps small creators like me grow. And once I hit 10k subs, I'll be doing a 99 lap victory lap run. So if you want to watch that, help us hit that goal. Anyways, if you want more content, Come follow my Twitch, I'm live every single weekday at 12pm central time. And also don't forget about our Discord, we're so close to 500 members. Okay, enough shilling, let's talk Isaac. Starting off this run, I don't have much to go off of, because I started it weeks and weeks ago. However, I know from the beginning of the second stream, we can see what we already unlocked and did. In the first stream, we unlocked... Isaac, Cain, Judas, Blue Baby, Eden, Eve, Samson, Azazel, and Lazarus. We also went and beat Hush three times, and also Mega Satan. Meaning, we should have access to both Mother and Apollyon, right? Well, no. See, the game does this weird thing when you get an unlock, but don't enter a loading zone afterwards. As most of you know, you're able to tell what kind of unlocks you get mid-run by seeing what pop-ups show up when you enter a new floor. As it so happens, these pop-ups determine some of the larger unlocks, like a new character or a new area, such as the alt paths. What we didn't know is that the game counts walking through a door as the same kind of loading zone as entering a new floor. The big difference being the game doesn't hard save your game or run, it only resyncs your unlocks. Meaning, not only do you have to kill Hush three times, you also gotta enter a loading zone after each kill, and we only left the Hush room twice. But that pretty much sums up our first stream. A couple of hush kills and some basic A-side unlocks by using force crashing to farm certain boss kills and achievements. When we pick up on stream 2, I have my good friend Merm with me to help me haul items and cards throughout the run. We start on a victory lap, meaning we need to find and use an arcade to be able to get unlocks again. Sadly our tester, XY, told us that there was no more chance for arcade on that victory lap seed, so we made our way back down to the dark room to start one more lap, our last lap we could do before becoming the lost. We started our second lap, and XY once again told us that there were no more chances for our key on this seed. This means, we have to start using some of our bigger glitches to make this run work. This is the first and only phantom lap we use in this run. If you don't know what a phantom lap is, watch the previous 30 character video before this one. These phantom laps, to recap, take away all of your items, and you're left with nothing. Once again again, XY said that there was no our key on this phantom lap seed, so we had to start a whole nother lap. This was the start of our 7th lap, and it was looking pretty grim. But everything changed when we found a new, big brain strat. So XY mentioned there was no Arky on this seed, but he did say there was a reroll machine on the Womb 1. 
So, theoretically, if we could spawn an item in there, we can get our key off of a reroll. Well, how do we manage to spawn an item? Well, it's all thanks to our friend the Judgment card. That was clean. That was clean. clean. All right. Judgment. Here we go. Get donated. We get both of them. It doesn't matter which one we have out here. When the sack happens, we got a. Yes. Hold on. Let's get both these out here. Chaos was also one of the items. Could be fun to have chaos. It might be really good for us actually too. Okay, start rolling. Okay, here we go. Once the sack shows up, we gotta stop. Yeah, right here, right here, right here. Okay, okay I want you to drop your card for me. You gotta trust me with this, all right? I'm picking this up. We're gonna go all, all the right. way to Dark Room. Okay. This Judgment reroll play right here actually comes in clutch to save the run from certain failure later. So keep this one on the back burner. Anyways, we got our R key, we popped it, and ended up back on basement one again, with our next step being to kill Hush one last time to unlock the alt path. Once we beat Mother, we unlock Tainted Kane and Bob's your uncle. Sadly, there was no other R key on this next reset, and because our in-game timer was past half an hour, we couldn't fight Hush. No Mega Mama, no R key, no Hush. So once again, we started our next lap. This, however, is where the run starts to break. And you'll notice just how far we're pushing Isaac to its absolute limits. When we entered Caves 1 on this victory lap, we didn't have much of a plan. We were going to use the secret room mural machine on this floor to force an Arky. You might be thinking if Arky gives you the same seed, we can just use the womb 1 1 over again last lap. Sadly, Arky does not reset the item pool, so we can only find it once per run. This was our one shot. However, victory laps give you different seeds, so we can use this new lap to get Arky again. Problem was, according to XY, the machine breaks before you see Arky, so we needed a way to spawn multiple pedestal items in there. We did, at this time, have double steam sale restock, but we can get our hands on quite a few cards. However, we didn't have infinite money, so we were a bit limited, until Mary saw something a bit strange. Our donation machine's number was not going neither up nor down on the right way when tampered with. Do you see these strats right here? What's with the number on the dono machine? I don't know, it's not going down. Infinite money, maybe? Oh no, it's going infinite up. Wait, it's went up. You see it went up? Yeah, it, it, it's gone up and down and up and down. And... Do we have infinite money? I don't know. That means infinite cards. What hmm. happens when I bomb it? I'm wondering if it. Yeah, it does. Couldn't I technically just fire a tear at it? Oh my god, you're right. Oh, <laughs> fire tears, fire tears right now. And then just hit like right, maybe. Yeah, you, you can use your seat. You can use your like your, your your second stick, your right stick. Oh my god. Okay, stop firing, stop firing, stop firing, stop firing. Stop, stop. Oh, okay. Right. Arky, we we Arky. are going to get Arky here. Dude, what is this? <laughs> We're going what to get Arky here. I can tell you right off the bat, we have no idea what's going on here. We think it's some kind of combination of Victory Laps trying to freeze the machine, but Arky trying to undo it. This is the first sign of the game starting to show cracks of breakage. So now, I'm going to pass the mic over to Merm to give us a quick strategy rundown of what's going on on this cave's floor. Now using the infinite money glitch, we started to use it to farm for the Judgment, Wheel of Fortune, and Temperance cards to use in the secret room. Once we got around 9 pedestals, we rerolled that until we got Arky. Then, because of restock, we were planning on using that same money to repeatedly buy shop items until Diplopia showed up, as well as a question mark card. However, Chaos came first. That ended up being okay though, because this meant we could find Arky, Diplopia, and other useful items anywhere in the run, which does come into play later. As you can see, this bug worked on literally every shop from here on out, so if a shop became too crowded, we could just move on as long as we had our safety Arky. We repeated this the next three floors and used familiars like Bum Friend to drop us dice shards, double active cards, and butter, which was our only necessary trinket. In my time on the run, we didn't find Diplopia, but what we did find was Bumbo, who ended up being almost the reason that this run died. But more on that from BDiff later. So, yeah, this might legitimately be the most broken glitch in Repentance, uh, but no big deal. 
I know taking chaos seems bad, but I was planning for the future, hoping to avoid any soft locks. Just wait for the end. Anyways, Merm and I went down to Mother with a double active card, beat her, and then he had to go. So I grabbed a longtime viewer from chat, Kala Noodle, and we began our next run through of the game, using our shop bug. Funnily enough, Bumbo, who previously killed Merm with a bomb, stole all of our money, and spawned useless junk in the rooms, and was overall just a nuisance, did this on our floor one shop. Alright, alright, alright. They're done. I think they're done dropping their things right now. Okay, we can go back in. Alright, so let's start uh, bombing it again. The high rock. Let's try to just pop my cards. Plus 310 damage. Jeez, please. Okay. And it's nails. Stitches. Not what we want to see right now. What? You're good. You're good. Don't matter. Uh, it don't matter. Uh, should we uh, leave the room for Holy Mantle to charge back? Uh, yeah, probably. Oh, wait, wait, wait oh, what? Dip, wait, dip, what? Diplo just <laughs> huh? pops out of nowhere. Where did um, you come from? No so, we deployed Arky and then pressed forward, going to Beast, since we did beat Mother. This, however, is where VOD 1 ends, and I come back the next day to keep going. The next VOD, though, it's a pain. This one was six hours long. I didn't have a co-op player, so I was playing with two characters at once. So my plan was to go to Beast and to find Clicker first. The reason we need Clicker first is because player 1 needs to be Kane in order to unlock Tainted Kane, who we can then use to craft infinite Arkies. On my very first lap of the day, this happened. We will- I skipped the train. of course I did that. I never pick up Dreamcatcher, man. I always- <gasps> We do have to be careful with Clicker though. If we lose School Bag, we lose our R key as well. So it's a very risky gambit, but it really is our only option. Once we became Kane, I started on my quest for Beast. Because I was already on the mausoleum, I couldn't go this lap, so I R keyed and headed for the depths. Along the way, I found some more double active cards, which are essentially R keys to us, so it's very, very helpful. Uh, but then, I realized something pretty bad for us. Clicker is uh, up in the air right now. If you use any item enough, you'll find the right result eventually. But do we not have our. S Where's our beast store? We have to victory lap. We have to victory lap. So, you want to know what happened? You want to know what's happening right now? Because. Let me pause again so you can hear the flies. Because it's the same seed as before, the floor generates the exact same every single time, barring planetarium unlocks and other special rooms. The beast door relies on your seed generate because it, it, it messes up the generation for this floor a lot. So what we need to do is get a new seed. How do we acquire a new seed? We have to do a victory lap. And what so we can't unlock Tainted Cane. So we have to get another R key. We have to refresh our seed after beating Mother to get it. So Amazing. Every word of what you just said was wrong. So, originally, what I thought was happening was that the game needed the new seed to generate the beast tour, because it's a pretty big generational difference. But what was actually happening was something we hadn't figured out yet in the run. Remember earlier when I mentioned you needed to enter a loading zone for a huge unlock to sink into your game? Yeah, there are no loading zones after Mother except for the run ending chest which means we need to go all the way back down there again to beat her to actually get the unlock. But that's not all. When I realized this, I realized something else. Something much, much worse. Not only did the game not give us Mother, it also took away Apollyon, Forgotten, and Jacob and Isao. If our door is there, then I guess, next floor. Moment of truth. Please, 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 please. It's not there, dude. Why isn't it there? Wait, what? We beat Mother, though.
Yep. The game does not think we beat Mother yet. But we beat her on stream. What? Well, yeah, I guess what we're doing today, we're going back to beat Mother again. No wonder it wasn't spawning. That's so strange. Uh, were there other locked characters? But we have, we, what? We already unlocked Apollyon though. Wait, we already, wait, we already did both of these. We should have 15, yeah? Forgotten's not there either? Is it taking away our characters? Because we did those. Like, we, you guys were here for that, right? We unlocked all those characters. Because X, X, Y, are you in chat right now? Because X, Y, we had you check the seed. We had you check the seed, right? X, Y, for, for the, the void portal? This was a true show of Isaac starting to break. The game was literally taking away unlocks from us. And we don't know why. Maybe it's a safety feature to prevent sequence breaks like we're doing. Maybe the game just can't handle a run like this. I don't know, and I don't really care. It was frustrating, but we're past it now. So, what's our next move? Well, I'm already caned, so we don't need Clicker for at least a little bit. We need to enter home with every single A-side character unlocked, so we can sharp plug fanny pack our way to every character in one home visit. This means we need to re-beat Mother, re-unlock Forgotten, and re-beat Mega Satan again. Now would be a good time to mention that at some point I did enter a third player into the run in the form of Lazarus so we could unlock Bethany. It was also at some point early in the second VOD where me and Merm unlocked Maggie, so we're now only missing three unlocks. That in the form of Jacob and Esau, the Forgotten, and Apollyon. This may not seem that bad at all, it only really requires two resets minimum. One for going to Mother, and one for Apollyon and Forgotten. However, this was quite a big risk. There was once again that chance he wouldn't unlock the All Path to Beast again, which is a big issue in itself. And then there's Apollyon. Let's talk about Mother. I ended up actually needing a second reset here because I forgot to enter Mausoleum 1 at some point. Oops, my bad. Aside from that, it went perfect. We got the unlock, no big deal. But now, it's time for Apollyon and Forgotten. Before I went to get Apollyon or Forgotten, I made a quick detour. I decided to go for home with Tainted Cane. The reason behind this being that Tainted Cane can craft an endless supply of R keys once we unlock the Forgotten. Or so we thought. Yeah, this is the part in the video where the game just stops functioning. Infinite money is one thing, but what about this clip? I think he's still broken, let's find out. Let's go find a, fight a boss first, see if Tainted Cane is still not Tainted Cane anymore. You walk in, you, you dust him. Alright Cane, I think you're the black controller. You are? Yeah, your Tainted Cane is still like broken to garbage, okay. Did you catch that? Yeah. Tainted Cane no longer breaks items on contact. He picks them up. This is both great news and terrible news. One thing on the positive side is we can use this character slot to store useful items like deck of cards, crystal ball, diplopia, or R key. But this also means we couldn't farm bone hearts, which means we can't craft the R key. At first, we couldn't even craft in general with him, meaning we couldn't even craft smaller things we need like clicker or diplopia. But it turns out that his HUD was just near impossible to see. And we also couldn't shuffle his ingredients around, which yes, makes crafting a pain, but it doesn't make it impossible. So, on the way to the Mega Satan fight to unlock Apollyon, I decided to craft Clicker, because we're going to need it eventually in the future, regardless. Problem was, it required a single pill, which we couldn't get because of a starter deck. It also required one key, one soul heart, and five bombs. Hey, whoa, 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 editing BD1P here. Whatever I just said on the video about the recipe for Clicker requiring like five bombs or a soul heart or whatever is completely wrong. I don't know where I got that from. The one we used in the run I'll put on screen right now, the, the problems and issues that arose from this recipe are still the same, just whatever I said in the video for the recipe is wrong. Sorry about that. Back to the video. This was an even bigger issue when I realized I couldn't see my crafting HUD, and we could only get even numbers of consumables due to BOGO bombs and humbling bundle. It took me half an hour to craft pill baggy, which turned cards back into pills, and another half an hour for clicker. I then did some light farming for the butter trinket, acquired it, 
and headed down to the dark room to use Clicker as Tainted Cane, which would then drop it on the ground, so player 1 can pick it up and switch characters and unlock different Tainteds at home. Now, keep in mind, it was essential to us that we kept Tainted Cane, because he's just literally an item generator for us, right? He's perfect. And the biggest talking point of the 30 character video was that Clicker can't turn Tainted characters into normal characters and vice versa. So, theoretically, if Tainted Cane used Clicker, it would keep him as our only unlocked Tainted character, Tainted Cane. Well, once again, the game is starting to show its wearing cracks. Because it turned Tainted Cain into freaking normal Judas. Box. Anytime soon. You do that. And a Cain picks up Sinus Tears. Also, one more item to be safe. And then, Tainted Cain, you are going to. Wait. That's not supposed to be possible. That's not supposed to be possible. Tainted Cain has become a normal character. Yeah, this means we can't turn him back into a tainted character, and because all four of our slots are filled, we can't get him back. But you know what, dude? I don't even ask questions anymore. The weirdest breaks are still yet to come. Well, TLDR. We now hold Clicker as player one, so we can move on to Apollyon. But before I went for Apollyon, I wanted to make sure I could take advantage of all my remaining R keys and question mark cards in case I lost them going for Apollyon which is a mechanic that I'll explain later. Also, quick side note, I had unlocked the Forgotten off stream, but I recorded it so I'll put the recording into the full run collage to avoid any confusion and to erase any cheating doubts. I was just getting completely tired of commentating while grinding out for these characters. But it all came down to this. We were here, just about to head into home with the safety archie and a question mark card. I just explain how stupidly cerebral this run had to be. My strategy for unlocking the most characters possible in each home visit was the use of Sharp Plug, which is an item that turns your HP into charges. That, accompanied by Fanny Pack, Old Bandage, Dark Bum, Piggy Bank, and Bum Friend, pretty much meant that I would never lose enough HP to die. Then, I would touch the Santa character, Force Crash, then click her over to a different character. So, I got to work. First up was Jacob and Esau. Then, The Forgotten. Then Blue Baby. Lazarus. Eden. And then finally, The Lost. This was a pretty big roadblock. If you have no HP, you can't use Sharp Plug at all to charge back up. So this might feel like it's a soft lock to you, right? But to me, it was an opportunity. I wanted to show off something I've been planning for quite some time on this run. Earlier in the run, I gave player 3 and 4 Guppy's Collar, which is a huge no-go in multiplayer. Also earlier in the run, I gave myself 4.5 Volt, which charges up your active item based on the damage that you output. So, I activated the fight, and I went to battle Dogma. Whenever my item would charge up or the boss would be close to death, I would move one of my Guppy's Collar players into Dogma, therefore killing them and resetting the fight and putting us all out of the room, allowing me to bypass being the lost. After doing that, we got Eve, Samson, Maggie, Isaac, and Azazel. I could have stayed for a few more clickers and hopefully gotten our last elusive two in the form of Bethany and Judas. Because of my Guppy's Collar shenanigans, I only had one living Arky holder left, and I couldn't hold it in case Clicker removed School Bag. So, I popped our emergency Arky and I dipped. Now it's time for Apollyon for real. As I'm sure most of you know, there is a coin flip chance you get a Void Portal after Mega Satan. We need this portal because when you get the Apollyon unlock, it's right as Mega Satan dies, and if he dies and we get no portal, the run ends. No extra frames to TP out on, no nothing like that. So the question then becomes, how do you control this coin flip chance? As we discussed in the last video, the portal is seeded. That was both good and bad. Well, how could control be bad? Well, let's say we get a seed that doesn't spawn the portal after Mega Satan. Then obviously, we can't unlock a Polyon. No big deal though, we can always get a new seed through a victory lap. Problem is, if that lap is also seeded against us, we're down an R key. Good thing I'm the luckiest player ever, and got that seated chance first try. It was now time to head back to home, and to get those last pesky three characters. Before heading on up there, I turned into Judas just to be safe, and stored some charges. Beside Judas came easy. We now just needed to find Bethany and Apollyon. Aside from becoming the Lost again, this also went pretty much perfectly, so we should be done, right? Well, just watch. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've all been waiting for. For three months I've sat in this chair. 
fighting to prove this challenge is legit and you could do it. And on today, July 13th, 2021, just 10 days after my 19th birthday, I stand in front of your final character for the 30 character run. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, and we're missing somebody. And we're missing somebody. And we're missing somebody. Hold on. Um. We got Blue Baby a lot. We might have just not walked into the room. Apparently, we, we didn't get tainted a, a, a Blue Baby. We're, we're gonna get him. Hold on. I'll hold your horses. I don't know how we're gonna get, get out of this room. I don't know. Um, there he is. Okay. We just gotta exit this room somehow. So we got Blue Baby, but we didn't. There is a clip of us walking into him and unlocking him. Your first thought may be just a force crash, and keep finding Clicker until we get Blue Baby again. Now, that would work, if not for the fact that I just saved and exited after already acquiring the tainted character in Home, meaning he's no longer there or accessible in this version of Home. The next option would be to Archie and leave, however, in the midst of my Apollyon farming, Clicker removed School Bag. I was stranded. Whoa, 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 but, but hold on, BD1P. I already unlocked tainted Blue Baby. I mean, I saw it happen. I saw the clip. Well, once again, the game gave me one last screw you middle finger and didn't give me the unlock for the character. And to avoid the comments that are going to be saying, you didn't wait long enough after touching him, just watch the clip. Careful with your health, though. Health is not looking too strong right now. We tried everything to get me out of home. We tried rune charting into an AWAS error room glitch, but sadly, error rooms on Dogma Home, commonly known as floor 13A, are an endless loop of trapdoors that don't reset floors. We tried telepills, also didn't work. Error rooms are almost inaccessible on floor 13A. So what do we do? Just give up? Well, what if I told you I planned for this? Just in case, that I had the biggest brain strat I have been using the entire run. What if I forced the game to give me an R key, while one of my dead co-op players was already holding it? Ladies and gentlemen, strap in for the BD1P Victory Lap Active Item Glitch Duplication. From the very moment I started this run, I did three things. I gave Guppy's Collar to every single co-op player I had, I made sure to never pick up Book of Belial, Unman Mishap, or Kamikaze, which are three very common active items, and I made sure to hold the Rosary. Now. It is not because these items are very important, it's because they are common, and I was testing something. I wanted to see how many times I would get these items on a given run, and if they could reappear. And sure enough, every time I got a new seed, they did. Now pay attention to that. New seed. So if you've been paying attention, you'd notice something. I never once found Clicker or Arky on this particular seed. I picked them both up on a victory lap where achievements are disabled and flags are often bypassed. What this means is that when I use a double active card or a second R key to reset the seed, the item pickup flags are re-enabled with the achievements, and told the game that I never once saw or found R key or clicker on this seed, because it was crafted or found on the previous lap. The game then took to account, to at least my understanding, every passive item that me and my three other characters were holding, and told itself to stop this from appearing by placing it with breakfast. I then started to full clear every single floor, checking every item room, shop, etc. I wanted to clear out any items in the game's pool that I could. 
I wanted as many passives and active items seen that were not Arky or Clicker. When it came time to go to home, I'd either picked up or seen every item in the game, barring a select few actives that I was saving for later. I was able to use my knowledge of Herbalile, Lemon, and Kamikaze were to keep them in the rotation for my final home visit. That way, if I could spawn enough judgments, fortunes, and IV machines, pay them out to breakfast, then farm for a dice shard to use my deck of cards, I could reroll some of those breakfasts into the few remaining items I had left and hadn't touched. You may be wondering why I even needed to skip those items in the first place then, and truthfully, I didn't. I was only skipping them early on, so I'd be able to see if they would show up again in the same spot over again and prove my theory correct, that I could force a game to spawn a second Arky if I hadn't naturally seen one on a specific seed. And sure enough, I was right. After an insane amount of grinding, this legendary screenshot was taken. And next stream, we finish off the run for real this time. Okay, now we're in Apple Baby right now because we do not have any... Uh, we have Red Heart containers. Blue Heart. Okay, we could be Blue Baby right now. We're, okay, this is what we need to be. We are going to win the run now. <sighs> Thank God, dude. Hogged out of your mind. This is it, dude. This is it. Moon? Good, we're, okay, we're done. All I gotta do over here, this is also on the other side of the, the floor. This is our other stuff. Nice breakfast in there. We pick this up. We are Blue Baby on basement one. Three hours and 40 minutes into this certain lap. <sighs> okay. All we need now is a cracked key. <sighs> We're done. Run is over. The floor is reset. All we gotta do is walk on over. Time. Time. I know I said I was gonna go more in depth on the bugs that we found, but as I scripted this, I realized I couldn't really explain any of them. So what about the optimizations? That too is pretty hard. If I were to do it over again, I would never enter a final floor without both an R key and a question mark on a non-clicker character. I would also rush to put Tainted Cane in the player 2 slot so I could both see the crafting hunt, and also, I, I, it's just easier, man. It just really is easier <laughs> to be able to see his crafting and mess around with it. Oh man. I also try to find Clicker naturally instead of trying to craft it to avoid our tainted normal glitch that happened with Judas. That was that was honestly almost a run death right there. And finally, I just wouldn't play the run over again. Our final time rests at just over 26 hours. If you enjoyed, like I said, please support the channel in any way you can. I love the growth I'm seeing right now and I love this community like a lot. You guys are insane. All of my socials including my Twitch, Twitter, and Discord are down below. So just take care, everyone. Have a good rest of your day. Remember, if you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. It does mean a lot to me to see the support. But hey, peace out. See you guys next crazy video.